Hello and welcome to BremTech. Today we'll be going over how I made this storage rack for plastic parts bins. It even lets you access bins in the middle because that's where the bin you need always is. And yes, it rolls too. So this isn't my first parts bin rack. I have previously made this one that fits on top of one of my toolboxes. It works pretty well, but this new one will have a couple of improvements, both for functionality and ease of building. I have a very specific place for this rack to fit. It's going under my basement workbench. I had to take into account the height of the workbench and also the casters that I will be using to make sure that this unit fits under the bench. Since this is very specific to my situation, I'm not going to show dimensions for everything, but a little later I'll share the important dimensions so that you can design your own. Some 3 quarter inch plywood cut to size will become the top, bottom, and sides of the rack. Funny thing, uh, the fence on my table saw doesn't allow for a cut that is as tall as my rack, so I had to clamp the side pieces together and cut them to length with a straight edge and circular saw. The back piece of the rack will be recessed into rabbit cuts on the back side of the top, bottom, and side pieces. I'm doing that here by making two perpendicular cuts in the wood, which makes a recess for the back panel to fit into. Hey, that's not a rabbit. The top, bottom, and sides are just glued and nailed together. Uh, at this point, I wasn't too worried about the squareness, um, but I, I try to keep it close for now. The rack will get squared up when I attach the back panel later. Here you can see what happens when you assemble two pieces with full length rabbits. To fix this, I just grabbed a scrap piece of wood, cut it to fit, glued it in, cut it flush, and then sanded it smooth. The side pieces were bowed. I knew this and had planned for a center brace to pull the sides back in. I intentionally made both sides bow outward so that they both get pulled inward. Here I'm marking, drilling, and screwing the center brace in. I'm using screws as opposed to the nails I used before to make sure that these pieces don't pull apart in the future. The width of the cabinet is fairly critical to allowing the parts bins to uh, slide in and out. And this is what the cabinet looks like after installing the center brace. Now it's time to mark where the supports will be installed. Instead of measuring uh, two sides on the top and two sides on the bottom, I'm making measurements on this piece of wood and then I will transfer those marks to uh, the two sides of the top and the bottom bins. That way, I am only measuring one time uh, as opposed to four times. I am changing up the method for installing the side supports. On my previous rack, I used a full piece of OSB and then added alternating pieces of a 2x4 support and OSB spacer. This worked, but I had to make a lot of cuts. And worse was that even though I started at the top um, with pieces that I thought were the same width, I was off target about an eighth of an inch once I got to the bottom. I was just stacking the pieces and didn't mark where they should go. And that's why I'm marking the locations on the new rack. These support rails are made from quarter inch poplar wood. I ripped them down to one inch tall and put the chamfer on the front. This was a, another improvement from my last rack that had squared off support rails. The chamfer makes it a little bit easier to insert the parts pin. Notice I'm aligning the support rails up with those marks I made earlier. Glue and nails are all that hold the support rails in place. So getting back to making your own rack, each parts pin takes up two and a half inches of height and Harbor Freight also makes a double deep parts bin that will also fit in this rack, but it will take up two slots. And probably the most critical dimension here is the width between 
the two side pieces, and it has to be 16 and 9 16 inches. Any more, and the bin will be too loose, and any less, uh, the bin will not slide in because it rubs on the sides. The back piece is just leftover OSB that I had available, but unfortunately, it wasn't large enough, so I had to use three pieces to fill the back opening. Here you can see how the rabbits work. Uh, the back panel fits down flush uh, with the other panels. And like everything else, the back panel is just glued and nailed into place. Right off the table saw, the corners of the plywood are fairly sharp. So I'm using an eighth inch round over bit on my router to, to knock those sharp edges down. I had some leftover wall paint and primer. The dark gray is the primer and the light gray is the paint. Uh, gray is a good shop color, so that worked out pretty well. I'm using Harbor Freight casters and I bought these for another project but didn't end up using them. The wheels lock fine, but the swivels don't lock. It wasn't good for the mobile bench I made but they'll be fine for the parts bin rack. To install the casters, I will need some screws, and I can get those screws from my parts bin in my other rack. I am pre-drilling holes for the screws, and I'm using a mishmash of screws here because they can't be any longer than the thickness of the plywood, yet the screws have to have a really big head because the mounting holes in the casters are unreasonably large. And no, I didn't fill the rabbit slots on the bottom of the rack. I only did the top, so I'm only using three screws per caster on the back. Now that the casters are on, this thing is all set. And there's nothing left to do except to bring it down to the basement and see how it fits under my workbench. Hey, that's not too bad. I'm kind of in the mood for some hair metal. I'm really happy with how this turned out in the end. It can hold uh, up to 10 of the thin bins and down on the bottom, you can see that there is one double depth bin installed. Before ending the video, I wanted to show how these chamfered support rails work. You can see how the bin rests on the support rail here. And let's say you slide the bin in, but the bin is angled down a bit. The chamfer acts as a ramp to lift the front of the bin up and allows it to be pushed in fully. Uh, maybe it's more clear from this angle. And compare that to the flat front of my previous rack. The bins get hung up if they do not go in perfectly straight. It's not the end of the world, but the chamfer is much better. Well, that's it for now, and I'll smell you later.